Quick side note before we get into the NFL Week 8 picks, a couple of trades this week I want to talk about with the New York teams. The Jets getting Brian Robinson for a late-round pick. Love that trade. They are ahead of schedule. They have a lot of talent on the team. Brees Hall getting hurt was a huge blow to them. They went and got James Robinson, who's a very similar back. I love that move. That is a statement from the GM saying the time for losing is over. We expect to win now moving forward. Huge statement to their fan base. That is the polar opposite of what some baseball teams did at the deadline where they punted their season instead of trying to capitalize on it. Now, on the other side, the Giants just traded away Kadarius Tooney for a third-round pick and a conditional sixth-round pick to the Chiefs. Love that pick for the Chiefs. They're going to actually know how to use him right. They got a quarterback that will be able to use him right. And Dable's been doing a great job so far with the Giants. I'm not blaming him. But Gelman put them in such a hole. Between Dable and Joe Schoen, they are doing a great job of making the best out of a horrible situation. Every week that's going on is actually making me more and more optimistic that the Giants are in good hands. This is the kind of move that just says, hey, we can't worry about the past. We can't worry about what has happened. We just got to move on from what we got. That's exactly what this is. So huge move for them. Now let's get into the game picks. Week seven, we were 10 and four overall. We are now 30 and 15 in the last three weeks. Let's keep that momentum rolling. So the first game is the Ravens at the Bucks tonight, Thursday night football. The Ravens are now underdogs. They are point and a half underdogs in this game. They were point and a half favorites at the start of the week. I'm going to take the Ravens money line. I just trust them more. They've been a little bit more consistent. Then London, we got the Broncos at the Jaguars. We all heard what that cornball Russ Wilson said. He's been stretching, doing high knees for 48 hours on the plane ride to England. Doesn't matter. Jaguars are better. Jaguars are going to win. The Broncos defense is utterworldly and is being completely wasted. Two and a half point Jag favorites. They're going to win. Take them to cover. Bears, nine and a half point underdogs at the Cowboys. Take the Cowboys to win. The Bears are actually progressing weekly. They absolutely destroyed the Patriots last week, but the Cowboys are going to be too much for them. Take the Cowboys to win flat out at home here. Raiders at Saints. Both these teams are somehow still alive. The Raiders are a better team. The Raiders are a more talented team. The Raiders have a better quarterback. They are one and a half point favorites on the road. Take them to cover that number. Panthers, four point underdogs at Atlanta. Give me the Panthers to cover the plus four. I have no idea who's going to win this game. I would take the Atlanta Falcons money line or the Panthers plus four. I think it's a toss-up game. I think it's going to be a field goal. So take that plus four. It's a gift. Steelers at Eagles. Philly is 10 and a half point favorites. They are going to absolutely demolish the Steelers. The Eagles are going to be in complete control the whole time. Take them winning. You can even do an alternate spread like the Eagles giving two and a half or three and a half. I think they're going to win by at least four. I just don't know if they're going to cover the 11 points that they need. Dolphins, three and a half point favorites on the road against Detroit. Detroit has been absolute dog water since looking good early. I think the Dolphins are going to win by a touchdown. So take the Dolphins to cover the three and a half points that they're giving on the road. Dolphins are going to win easy. Cardinals, three and a half point underdogs at the Minnesota Vikings. Kirk Cousins is mid as all. Holy hell. If I really believed in Kyler and the Cardinals, I would have them winning flat out in this game. I think they're going to lose by three. So give me the Cardinals getting the three and a half points. Patriots at Jets. I don't like Mac Jones at all. I would not touch this game, but since we do every single game here, I'm going to take the Jets getting two and a half points. I think this game is going to be decided by a field goal or less, so give me the Jets getting the two and a half points at home. Titans, two and a half point favorites at Houston. I know the Titans had a couple of injuries last week. The Titans should be six and a half point favorites here. They are so much better than Houston. They can feel their grasp on the division tightening. They have full control of their destiny. They have games up on the Colts and the Jaguars. They're going to continue. They're going to win by at least a touchdown. Take the Titans giving two and a half points against the Texans. Giants, three points underdogs at Seattle I think this is three points or less I think the Giants don't beat themselves the Seahawks have been doing a good job of beating teams that beat themselves the Giants are probably going to win this game them getting three points is huge take that to the bank I don't think Geno Stellar play continues the Giants defense is actually really good I think he's gonna have his first bad game of the year and the Giants are gonna win Commanders at Colts. Sam Ellering is starting over Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan hasn't been good in three years. That's not shocking. Ironically, three is the points that the Colts are favored by. And unlike the Packers, who somehow lost that game to Washington last week, the Colts are going to win this game. Take them to take the money line because I don't know how backup quarterback is going to play, but there's no way they're losing this game. Niners at Rams. This one's an interesting one to me. I had the Rams, Buccaneers, and Packers as teams to watch to turn it around. I don't feel any confidence in the Packers anymore. I still think the Bucs are on life support for turning their season around. This is the week we're going to find out about the Rams. Matt Stafford's tennis elbow was a big problem. The extra week off, we're going to see what his arm is going to look like the rest of the year here. If he comes out and he looks normal, the Rams are going to win, and the Rams are going to win the NFC West. If he doesn't look good and they still are abysmal, I think it's officially the 49ers division. So give me the Rams to win at home in this game. Take the money line. It's not worth taking the one and a half points. 
I think this is the turning point for the Rams on the season. Sunday night football, the Packers are 10 and a half point underdogs at the Bills. Take the Bills to win. If you want to do an alternate spread, don't go higher than negative four and a half for the Bills because I think the Packers are going to show up to this game. They're just significantly worse than the Bills overall across the board. The Bills are going to win. They're going to win easy, but I would not be shocked to see the Packers have some sense of pride this week, play hard, keep it relatively close, and then have a backdoor cover at the end. There's no way I'm going to take the Packers to lose this game by 10 points. It could happen. I just don't feel it happening. I think the Bills are going to win by somewhere between three points and seven points. And then Bengals, three and a half point favorites at Cleveland. I would say buy it down to two and a half points because I think the Bengals are going to win by three or more points in this game. They finally got rolling on offense. They finally got their identity back. Every week since week three, they've been doing a better job of protecting Joe Burrow. The Bengals should easily win this game. So take them the win and you can take an alternate point spread of two and a half. I think they're going to cover it by at least three. That'll do it for our picks. Now I know for the baseball fans on the channel, I said I was going to do the Met video today as well. I am not going to do that. I have to do a lot of extra resource gathering for that video. That video is coming soon, though. I promise it's coming soon. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to do probably a full exhibit A through Z of what happened to the Mets season in September. It's not going to be an entire year recap, but it's going to be something that's worth watching. So make sure you're subbed to the channel. Also, if you enjoyed this video, like it. It helps me a lot. We will catch you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be good.